أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والحمد لله الذي جعلنا من المتمسكين بولاية أمير المؤمنين ولئمة المعصومين عليهم السلام والحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله والحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحصي نعماءه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتهدون الذي لا يدركه بعد الهمم ولا يناله غوص الفطن الذي ليس لصفته حد محدود ولا نعت موجود ولا وقت معدود ولا أجل ممدود فطر الخلائق بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته ووتد بالصخور ميدان أرضه ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين حبيب الله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد علي محمد وعلى ال بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنه الله على اعدائهم اجمعين من يوم عداوتهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الحكيم وهو أستق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولكل أمة أجل فإذا جاء أجلهم لا يستأخرون ساعة ولا يستقدمون آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم يا علام محمد وعلي محمد عما بعد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته I begin in the name of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala There is no doubt that it's due to his kindness and generosity that he provides for us opportunities as beautiful as these where we gather in remembrance and in glorification of him tabaraka wa ta'ala next we begin this sermon the way the commander of the faithful ali ibn abi talib alayhi ma afdalu salatu salam ala muhammad wa ali muhammad we we'll begin many of his sermons by saying usikum wa nafsi bi taqwallahi al azim i advise you and I advise myself to be God-conscious, God-fearing, and pious human beings. Last week we began our introduction regarding the subject of study of life after death. So what we are doing in the course of these first sermons for a few weeks, inshallah, is discussing the subject of Quranic eschatology. What does the Quran have to say about the subject of life and death and life after death. As we said yesterday, last week in the introductory sermon that nearly one-fourth of the Quranic verses, over 1,500 verses, deal with the subject of death and life after death. Even though such a vivid description has been given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what our ulama say is that we must be cognizant that even though this description is present, the experience that one will feel when they actually go through this journey will be unique on its own. And the, the example they give is that you can take a caterpillar and you can describe to the caterpillar what it will feel like to become a butterfly. And you can give it all the descriptions you can in the world, but when it actually experiences it for itself, the experience will be something that words could not have described. Yeah? Likewise for death and that which will come after death. Allah wa ta'ala has emphasized it to this degree in the Holy Quran to make it known to us that there is going to be something after this world. The experience of it is going to be dependent on our actions, is going to be dependent on how we live this world, and truly is going to be a very unique experience, um, the kind of which is difficult to put into words. So today we begin the discussion on death and the subject of death itself, there are many dimensions that we can look at it from. 
Death in the Arabic terminology is described as mawt. And mawt, when we look at the Arabic lexicon, for example, we would open up um, Lisan al-Arab, which is an Arabic Arabic dictionary. It would translate mawt as the loss of ability or power from an entity. When an entity loses its ability of function, it loses its power, it's known as mawt. And this is why in Arabic lexicon, Moat would be used for numerous things. For example, a barren land, a land which does not grow vegetation. It has lost its ability. Yeah? That land will be known as mayit, for example. A fire which has been extinguished, that would be described as being something which is moat or mayit, that it doesn't have that ability. And likewise, when we look at the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the term mayit or moat for different examples. For example, in Surah Yasin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَآيَةٌ لَهُمُ الْأَرْضُ الْمَيْتَ A sign for them is a land which is meita, which is mayit. Yani it is barren, it doesn't grow vegetation. He says, this is the sign for you. Why? Because after a season or two, I will bring it back to growth. That means I have that ability to do so. But he uses the term mayit here to describe a land which lacks vegetation or is barren. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the human being as mayit in numerous verses. For example, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala in a beautiful verse that describes our process of creation, He says, ثُمَّ خَلَقْنَا النُّتْقَةَ الْعَلَقَ فَخَلَقْنَا الْعَلَقَةَ مُضْغَةَ he says, then we created the drop of fluid of a clinging mass. Then we created the clinging mass as a fleshy tissue. فَخَلَقْنَا الْمِذْغَةَ عِذَامًا فَكَسَوْنَا الْعِذَامَ لَحْمًا ثُمَّ أَنْشَأَنَاهُ خَلْقًا آخر. فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ أَحْسَنُ ال... أَحْسَنْتُمْ خَالِقِينَ yeah? He says, then we created the clinging mass as a fleshy tissue. Then we created the fleshy tissue as bones. Then we clothed the bones with flesh. Then we produced him as yet another creation. Allah is indeed the best of creators. Yeah? It's amazing, you know, when, when these verses are given to anybody who deals with the medical profession and they see the process of the birth of a child when it's first a clinging tissue, a mass, and then it develops. Allah wa ta'ala 1400 years ago described to the people exactly the process of human creation. The very next verse, after he describes the creation of a human being into this world, he says, Summa inna kum ba'da and then after that he says, indeed you will be mayit after that. You will no longer cease to exist after that. What is important here is that the word mayit that is being described here by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the loss of ability or power for that human being is referring to the body of the human being, not the soul of the human being. Right? We know that when the body, when the body stops to function, the soul then continues to live. And therefore, from a physical definition, from a very material definition, may it would be when the physical body stops, stops beating, the heart stops beating, the cells deteriorate, the blood doesn't flow anymore. When that body stops to function, it is known as may it. But from a spiritual understanding, the term mayit means when the soul and the body depart from one another. Right? And from this understanding, we see that there is a very intricate relationship that exists between the soul of the human being and the body of the human being. You know, what's the soul? The soul is something which is complex. But anything that I can say, I, I did this, yeah, that means it is referring to the soul. Yeah? The soul is that I part of me, which for example, uh, we refer to which makes intentions, which makes decisions, which loves, which dislikes. All of these are attributed to the soul of the body. When mouth happens, there is a disassociation yeah, of the soul and the body. Now this as well can be understood in one of two ways. You know, one way is that when the body loses its power, or its ability to function for whatever reason, let's say health reasons, accident happens and the body loses its ability to function, at that time the body becomes of no use to the soul anymore. So the soul leaves the body. And there is where this detachment has happened. But other times it could be understood as that when the time for the soul has come to depart, 
The soul departs the body and the body now loses that ability to function so it's, it is rendered useless. Yeah? And therefore you see that there is this intricate relationship that exists between the body and the soul where for the body to function correctly in this world it needs a soul. And for the soul to thrive it needs a vehicle. Right? It needs a body. And this is why when the soul departs this material body and it crosses into the realm of Barzakh, even in Barzakh the body, the soul is in need of a body to function in Barzakh. Yeah? And it is given another body, one which would be um, similar to the environment that it lived in, in Barzakh. Yeah? We'll discuss this in Barzakh. But here the soul needs a body which is material, so it can touch. Yeah? It can taste, it can do all of these things. Likewise in Barzak, it will need a body, but it will need a body which is suitable for the environment in Barzak, which is not a material environment, rather an immaterial environment. But this tells us that the soul, for it to truly function, needs a vehicle. And inshallah we will discuss this um, in a few weeks when we talk about Barzak. What I want to end with today is the notion or the understanding that when may, may a mot happens, when death happens, it's not the end, rather it is merely a continuation through different existences. Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib He says in a very lovely hadith in Bihar al-Anwar Ayyuhan nas wa inna khuliqna wa iyyakum lil baqa la lil fana He says, O man Surely we, you and I, have been created to remain lil baqa, not lil fana, not to perish. Walakinnakum min darin ila darin yunqalun. Except that you will be transferred from one residence to another residence. So this is the first portion that we need to understand that when mouth happens, it is of the body and the soul will continue. If God gives us life, we will continue the discussion on death insha'Allah next week wa akhiru da'wan an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim qul huwa allahu ahad allahu samad lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad sadaqallahu al-anjil azim salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad salli ala أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين نكال الظالمين سريخ المستصرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين اللهم صل على خاتم النبيين وسيد المرسلين محمد ما صل على محمد وعلى محمد وصل على سيد الوصيين أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب عليه السلام لا محمد وعلي محمد وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين ما صل على محمد وعلي محمد وصل على سبت الرحمة وإمام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة ما صل على محمد وعلي محمد وصل على علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة القائم المهدي على محمد وعلي محمد صلاة لا غاية لعددها ولا نهاية لمددها ولا نفاد لأمدها اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات وتابع بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات 
ان کا مجیب الدعوات ان کا علا کل شعی ان قدیر صلی اللہ محمد والی محمد وحمد The past few weeks we have seen a tremendous rise in sectarian violence throughout the world and innocent lives being killed. Um, today or yesterday in Somalia there was an attack killing an innocent um, 19 people at a hotel. Um, again, these are Muslims attacking Muslims. Yeah, you look at the names of the victims that are there, they were Muslims who were the victims of these attacks um, carried out by Al-Shabaab, a terrorist organization um, that thrives on extremism. We heard about the attack in Islamabad in the university a couple of days ago as well. Um, in Somalia, even a week ago, um, in the border of Somalia and Kenya, there was a violence of 100 people being killed or, or an attack on the army base. And these attacks are happening throughout the world, even... Um, as we know, continuing in Iraq in a very um, high number, unfortunately. Um, last week we heard of uh, unfortunate sectarian violence from both sides. Um, both the Sunnis attacked, uh, or the extremists attacked, and then you saw the militias attacked back to the Sunni residents in the area in the city of uh, Muqtadiya, in the province of, Dia, of Diyala. Um, we find that... Um, ISIS carried out brutality of uh, suicide bombing, killing 42 people and injuring 54. Um, other 32 were injured um, in um, the Shia neighborhood of New Baghdad. Another seven were killed in a car bomb in Nahrawan district of east of Baghdad. And then that happened on a Monday last week. And then the next day, unfortunately, the, the militias who, are, who claim to be Shia um, attacked the Sunni inhabitants of that same city of Muqtadiya, um, killing 10 and 9 mosques were firebombed. Um, this back and forth escalation of violence, unfortunately, you know, this is a time when we can't just look at the extremists and say, well, it's them killing Shias. Unfortunately, um, the Shias have responded in a manner uh, which goes against the, the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt as well. And this is where last week, um, Ayatullah Sistani, Hafizahullah, through his representative, Sheikh Mahdi al Karbalai, issued a very strong statement um, against the sectarian violence that was gripping Iraq at that particular moment and unfortunately continues to do so. The sermon can be read online. I think I had discussed it in the wiladat of uh, our 11th Imam al Askari, alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Um, that you can Google this. You can, say, you can actually each week Google the, the sermons that are actually delivered by the representative of Sayyid Sistani, meaning these are Sayyid Sistani's own statements that he is issuing. Um, so if you just Google Sayyid Sistani's khutbah for last Friday and you put in the exact date, you will find the Arabic and the English translation of, or the English um, transcript of what he said. And I just want to read one paragraph because I think this serves as a very good guideline um, for those who are experiencing sectarian violence and for us here who have, been, who have managed to the best of our ability um, through the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no doubt that the sectarian issues have not spread into our lands here in Canada um, to that extent. He said, we, while we strongly denounce such attacks, we lay responsibility on governmental security forces to prevent the recurrence of such atrocities. He's talking about the atrocities that I just described, the back and forth killings that happen. He put the responsibility on government officials, right? He said that it's your responsibility to make sure that these type of actions do not happen. They must ensure that armed elements, now he's specifically talking about the Shia militias here. Yeah? He says, the government must ensure that the militias do not exist outside the government. Yeah? And we don't have rogue people going around trying to establish law and order. And that these militias do not threaten the security of civilians, no matter what sect or ethnicity they belong to. Yeah? This is a very powerful statement. That Agha is saying that it doesn't matter if they are Christian, if they are Sunni, if they are Kurdish, if they are Shia. Life is a life that needs to be respected and that responsibility needs to go to the government forces to ensure that the life of their citizens are protected. I think this is remarkable advice from our leaders, right? Um, where we see the message that needs to be spread throughout the world. And I think there's a lot for us to learn here is that we can't look at them and say them. I think there is this 
mentality. It's difficult to get out of it, of them versus us, right? Uh, we have to understand that, and we've talked about this, that uh, 95%, I would say, of the Sunni population are good, abiding citizens of the world. Yeah? Uh, and they, they don't have that penchant of violence that exists within certain elements, especially the Wahhabi elements, those coming from the Saudi ideology. Right? But we need to find ways to bridge gaps with them. We need to find ways to interact with them. And I think more so than that, you know, I feel that it is necessary for the Sunni Imams to give such messages to their congregations as well. Yeah? That it is every life that matters. To be honest, I'm not sure to what extent sectarian issues are discussed yeah, in our mosques of the Ahl Sunnah, for example. But when we have meetings of Sunni Imams and Shia Imams, this is a message that I've been trying to pass to them, that you need to discuss this with your own communities. Yeah? They always say that we don't want sectarian issues to come to Canada. Well, then we need to stop it from the pulpits and the positions that we have to stop such areas of happening. And this is a responsibility that we have, but every time I get the opportunity, I think I try to pass this message on to the Imams as well, that this is your responsibility to also ensure. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects our brothers and sisters throughout the world, whatever sect they may be, because no one should experience such violence and such um, animosity. We pray that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala hastens the return of our living Imam, who will bring justice to this earth as it has been filled with injustice. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. A'udhu billahi min ash shaytan ir rajim. Bismillahir rahman ir rahim wal asr. Inna linsana lafi khusr illa ladina amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawasu bil haq wa tawasu bil sabr. Sadaqallahu al-aliyu al-azim. Salli ala.